Hey folks, video number two. I quite literally just stopped recording the other one, so let's get into this. Oh, actually, you know what? I want to I wanna grab the pregnancy test because I do think I have them. I have, like, a box. Um, look, it's hidden in my closet. I have my... Do, 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 do. This is this is everything for my kiddo. So it's all the stuff that my ex and I like. I don't know any gifts or whatnot we've given to each other. It's, it's all in there. Uh, it's the way I see anything from that relationship is that is not my story. That's my kiddo's story. It's his origin story. Uh, so all this stuff is his stuff. So I keep it out of sight which keeps it out of mind but still easy access such easy access that i am gonna give up looking for that but i have i have the, the tests either in there and another sentimental box of mine in my closet as i'm sure all of you do um uh, yeah just wow okay so for this video, I want to talk about the actual pregnancy. So I found out when I was 20 and I had my kiddo two months after I turned 21. I celebrated my 21st birthday um, with a mocktail and the seven month bump. Um, winning. <laughs> so the pregnancy. So I was living in a dorm. I was living on the fifth floor of a dorm that had no elevator and that I was not working for me. I was incredibly, I had I just winded, uh, so winded every time I walked up the stairs. And morning sickness, morning sickness in a dorm with one bathroom, two bathrooms on the floor. No, no, don't, don't be pregnant in dorms. It sucks. <laughs> Walking into the, the dining hall for the food, the odors, the overwhelm. Luckily, I only actually vomited a couple of times throughout my pregnancy. But one time was I was, I walked into the the dining hall on campus, the nice dining hall, the nice one. Like, thank gosh I was near the nice one. Because if I was in one of the, one of the, the yucky ones while morning sickness which is not just in the morning it's the entire day but people only call it morning sickness so you only get the whatever the um like the empathy from people from people who haven't experienced it they they think it's only the morning You're like no it's the entire time i i have a picture of i sat up sleeping at one point because i was so nauseous and just beyond uncomfortable I, I literally propped myself up and slept like this because it was the only way I wasn't gonna throw up anyways so oh yeah yeah so th this time when I was in the, the dining hall one of the times that I did throw up so I was on one end and the bathroom is on the other end and of course it's like rush hour in there and I'm like I'm going to vomit and I like booked it across that dining hall across just through all of the oblivious college students it was like saturday or sunday morning or something and i went there and i just like plopped down and just into the into the toilet and i could hear somebody else in there which was very nice she's like oh are you okay i was like yeah i'm set and i was just like thinking like she absolutely thinks that i'm hungover in fact i can't even drink I'm not hungover. I'm the opposite. I'm just pregnant, which means I can't even, I didn't even like get the enjoyment of like the, the night out partying or whatever the night before. Goodness. Yeah. Needing to go cold turkey when you find out that you're pregnant, when you've just been introduced to, <laughs> to intoxication is also, it's wild, but, but you can do it. You can cold turkey, man. Yeah. So that was, that was the one time that I, yes, unfortunate. Um, okay, what's next? So, pregnant, da, da, da. my due date was right after finals. Uh, oh, dorms. Yeah, so the dorm, the dorm situation was difficult because I was up on the fifth floor. My ex was not, he was not in my dorm, so he wasn't able to get into my dorm unless I let him in. Not, to get out of bed, to walk downstairs to open the door, to walk back up the stairs that I already can't walk up in the first place 
while pregnant with morning sickness. No, 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 no. Um, so I reached out to accessibility services and I reached out to uh, Res Life and tried to get some accommodations. Not so much. I was, I, I did end up getting some, so I was able to access elevators and I was able to switch my dorm to a dorm across campus that did have an elevator. And that was so helpful that it really, that made a difference. I very much appreciated being able to take the elevator. I could not carry myself up there, especially with my, with my school bags and the baby, the bump growing. Uh, yeah, so I, I did experience some difficulties with student accessibility services. However, a couple years later, excuse me, uh, when I was a senior, uh, I met with the Title IX coordinator. I was like, hey, so this was really not very accessible when I was pregnant, and maybe somebody else will eventually be pregnant while being a student here. Um, and I think y'all can make some changes. So I had incredible conversations with them and they ended up making um, a web page for their for their website, which I don't know if that's up and live, but hope so. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll check in, see if they need some help with that. Cause I think it's just really important. Just show, you, show your students support. I mean, your life falls apart when you find out that you're accidentally pregnant to a degree. And on top of that, not, having the support was pretty tremendous and I'm very grateful for the the friends and family and professors who did support me um because that is also tremendous so that was I'm trying to think where about in the pregnancy I am Let's jump ahead to March 2020. Does anybody remember something that happened in March 2020? Uh, COVID. So I had a baby shower in my hometown. I was home for vacation. We were home on spring break. Um, my ex was at his with his family, which was entire different state, flight away and whatnot. And I was um, in Massachusetts with my family. And so we had a baby shower with like family friends, some family, um, my mom's friends, that kind of thing. And I was gonna have another baby shower that my, my friends at university were throwing, but COVID ended up happening. So that did not end up happening. Uh, so yeah, so I had the, this baby shower and that was, I don't know, it was around March like 9th maybe. Actually, I wanna say, I wanna say that March 8th was my last day out like in public because I was seven months pregnant. So when, when COVID hit as if it wasn't already, it hadn't already hit everywhere, right? Before we knew that it was everywhere, uh, when we thought it was all the way across, across the country. Uh, yeah, so I was seven months pregnant a high risk for COVID because pregnant. And so I started lockdown earlier than most people did. Uh, my birthday was on March 11th. Again, I celebrated that with a mocktail. I, so I was already in lockdown at that point, personally. So I was just in, in, my, in my house. It was right after the baby shower. The baby shower was the last time I saw people for a while. So it was nice that we like all got to be together. Uh, so yeah, so then, then COVID happened and then I made another video talking about how COVID uprooted my life and we had to, um, move. So I'm not going to get into that whole thing. There, there is a video on that, but we, my mom and I ended up like spontaneously, I would say, um, my, my parents had decided that they would move to Vermont to help my ex and I finish school. Um, helped like with childcare, which they did, and tremendous help, support, incredible. That would be a whole 30 minute video on its own, so I'm not even gonna get into that stuff. Um, but yeah, so 
shoot, what was I saying? Um, moved to Vermont. So yeah, so my mom and I, oh, we were planning on moving, but it was gonna be later on. And then we found out that maybe the border of Massachusetts would be closed, which would mean that we'd be stuck in Massachusetts. My ex was gonna be returning to Vermont. My doctors were in Vermont and we were gonna be living in Vermont. So me staying in Massachusetts and me potentially being stuck in Massachusetts was not gonna fly, especially by doctors who were not so great. Cause they were like, oh, well, liability issue. If you have a doctor in Vermont, we don't wanna see you here because something could mess up. You could sue us or something. They didn't, they didn't use those words, but um, I needed to get back to Vermont and I was doing a couple months. Maybe COVID won't last two weeks. Maybe it will last two months instead and we'll be stuck here. Maybe it'll last more than two months. Maybe it'll be more than two years. Maybe it's never going away. <laughs> Anyways, so we went to Vermont. We packed up anything that we could fit in the car and we drove to Vermont and I did not go back to that house. Um, back to my, the, the house that, I, I guess it wasn't my childhood house. It was my childhood town, but it was the second house that we'd lived in. And I moved in, we'd only been there for a handful of years, uh, like throughout high school. So then we were in Vermont, then classes were remote. So living with my mom and my ex and baby in the tummy, we had the pets, um, doing remote parenting class. Um, there's a lot that we missed out on, a lot of shopping, because like we were gonna go shopping for the stuff for his nursery after we'd gone to the house. So that was gonna be after we were in Vermont. And then by that point it was COVID and things were locked down. Um, yeah, uh, the first doctor's appointments where I went to where it was solo and masked and I, I'm just like having all these memories, all these pictures I've taken. Maybe I'll see if I can pop those in here. Although I feel like the it needs to be a little bit more tech savvy. I don't think I'm gonna be doing much editing for these videos because I, I just don't have the forks for it. Peep my video talking about forks, um, mental energy. Um, yeah, I. it's more important to me that I have the stories than that they look and sound good, I guess. So that's, again, if you're if you're watching this, thanks for joining. Thanks for, for listening to my my stories. Uh, but my videos are mostly for my, myself and my people, I'll say. People people can be broad, but for myself and for my people and whoever else wants to, wants to join along. Um, so then COVID. So if I had tested positive in the hospital when I went into labor, we were hearing stories about family friends who had the the mom had tested positive because we know that they're going to test you when you get in. So the mom had tested positive and they took the, the baby for two weeks. Excuse me. At this point, um, with COVID, excuse me, it was very much a panic, especially with pregnancy. Um, doctors, hospitals did not know what to do. The protocols originally I was hoping to have my mom, my cousin, and my ex in the room when I um, gave birth. And just the weeks before I went into labor of just uh, refreshing all the pages and seeing the updated policies and seeing how many visitors I was allowed, um, I was allowed one visitor, one visitor, one person. So that was my ex. So my mom wasn't able to be there. My cousin wasn't able to be there, which in retrospect, like everything worked out, um, but not not the ideal situation by any means. Um, some people I know were not allowed even one person. So I'm incredibly grateful that I was because holy heck, giving birth like is enough of a thing just like on its own, like with that being the only thing. But on top of that, to be to need to be alone. So we knew that if I tested positive, there was a possibility that they would take our kiddo from, from me. I had heard like, okay, we're taking the kid, they can come back for, for nursing, but that's the only time we want you around them because we don't want to expose them. We don't know if they have it. We don't know if you have it, but they didn't have, they didn't have like 
anything. This was, this was two months into into things. Um, they did um, go for the do do a mask um, during labor, but luckily the doctors were like, "We need to say that you need to try, and you gotta say that you tried, but." try to your own degree so like put on the mask oh yeah this is um contractions with a mask is kind of difficult i'm gonna take off the mask and then i've tried so i feel like ah, i'm getting into like the, the 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 going of the the labor but i guess this is still kind of leading up to it so i needed to not test positive which meant that i very much need to not be exposed also just didn't want to get covid because high risk for me and for kiddo at least potentially so um, I ended up for just out of the abundance of caution to make sure that if my, if my ex had happened to get it, we wanted to make sure that we knew that they would not be testing him in the hospital, but they would be testing me. So I kept some distance from him. Um, like I slept the last, um, like week or two of my pregnancy, I was sleeping on the couch um, just to make sure that we weren't like breathing all over each other just in case he did happen to have it. Because again, I was the one who was getting tested so we needed to make sure that I did not. Um, so yeah, now, now, I'm, now I'm like getting into the labor story. So I think I'm gonna cut this one off here and then jump into a third one but if you're, if you're curious where I was going with that sentence uh stay tuned <laughs> thanks